Okay then, question one, you've been given a table showing features of a bacterium and of a HIV particle. And you've been asked to complete this table by putting a tick where a feature is present. So I'm going to go through it feature by feature and we're going to think about whether or not that feature would be present. So let's start with RNA and RNA in a bacterium. What do we know about the role of RNA generally? DNA is transcribed into RNA and this goes to the ribosomes where it's translated into proteins. And there are other types of RNA too. This one's messenger RNA. There's also tRNA and ribosomal RNA that you need to know about at A-level. So RNA is a really important fundamental molecule and therefore it must be in a bacterium. But HIV is different because HIV is a virus. It doesn't have its own metabolism. So a lot of students get caught out here. But what you should know is HIV is a retrovirus and therefore its genetic code is actually carried for by RNA. So HIV also does have RNA. And then the next one, cell wall. Well, again, this should be fairly obvious if you know um, your prokaryotic cell structure. A bacterium would have a cell wall, so we can put a tick there, but HIV doesn't have a cell wall. We'll look at the structure of that in a minute. What about enzymes? Well, I think this one's fairly obvious too. A bacterium would have enzymes because they catalyze a whole wide range of reactions, really important molecules. And a lot of people think, again, because HIV doesn't have its own metabolism, it might not have enzymes. But if you know about how it replicates and you know its structure, you should realise it needs to actually convert its own RNA into DNA so that it can be inserted into the host cell's DNA. So this is kind of the reverse of transcription, isn't it? So one of the most important enzymes in a HIV particle is called reverse transcriptase. And like I said, the function of this is just to convert RNA back to DNA. It's reverse transcription. So we can put a tick there. And there are some other enzymes, a few other enzymes in HIV too. And what about a capsid? Well, again, students often get mixed up with the words here. So a lot of students confuse the word capsid with a capsule. And these are two completely different structures. So a capsid is found in viruses, it's found in HIV, and actually it surrounds its genetic material, its RNA, and it's made of protein, so it looks like this. Um, and then surrounding that, you'd have a lipid envelope uh, with some receptors on and stuff. Whereas a bacterium would have a capsule, so surrounding its cell membranes, surrounding its cell wall, is this little slimy capsule layer. It's not always present, but um, it's quite often present. That was a really bad drawing of a bacterium, but you get the idea. Okay then, let's just have a look at the mark scheme and see how they allocate the marks for this. So they've been quite harsh here and actually generally students did quite poorly in this question because the way they do it is they give one mark for each correct vertical column. So you have to know all the ones about a bacterium and all the ones about HIV to get the marks. Okay then, the next part. When HIV infects a human cell, the following events occur. Single-stranded length of HIV DNA is made. The human cell then makes a complementary strand to the HIV DNA. So I guess it's going from being single-strand there to a double-strand. This complementary strand is made in the same way as a new complementary strand is made during semi-conservative replication of human DNA. So that's a really important thing that they've put in there. So they're getting you to think about DNA replication and not necessarily to do with HIV. So describe how the complementary strand of HIV DNA is made. Now the reason students went wrong with this question is because it's about HIV, they've mentioned HIV, they've reeled off everything they know about how viruses, how HIV replicates, or they've talked about the entire process of semi-conservative replication. But that's a waste of time, so you really need to read the question and work out what they're asking you. So, describe how the complementary strand of HIV DNA is made. So effectively, they're asking you how we go from single-stranded DNA into double-stranded DNA. Okay, so that's the real question. And this is a habit that's really good to get into, focus on the question, always kind of rewording it and working out exactly what they want, exactly what topic they're testing your knowledge of. Here, it's not HIV, it's DNA replication. 
So from then on, we can say what we know about DNA replication at this particular stage. So you're not going to be talking about helicase and all of that. So I'm just going to show you what I would write here. Okay, and there we have it. That's what I would write in my answer. That's how I would word it. If we have a look at what we've got in the mark scheme. Okay, so you've got a mark for talking about complementary based pairing, or you could have said how it happens, adenine to thymine, cytosine to guanine. And you've got a mark for mentioning DNA polymerase and a mark for saying what DNA polymerase does, what bonds it forms. Okay, then the final part of this question. Contrast the structures of DNA and mRNA molecules to give three differences. So the way I would approach this kind of question to do with differences is I would actually think about their structure first and it can often help to draw their structure out. So we know that DNA is a double-stranded molecule. These two strands are joined up by hydrogen bonds. Um, a DNA nucleotide looks like this. Um, so we've got a base here that would be thymine, adenine, guanine or cytosine, any of them. We've got a phosphate here and we've got deoxyribose here, the sugar. RNA is just a single strand and this is what an RNA nucleotide looks like. So we've also got a sugar um, a phosphate group and a base but instead of thymine it's uracil and then also adenine, guanine or cytosine and instead of deoxyribose the sugar is ribose. So you can see I've got a lot of options here for things that I could talk about. Here are the three that I would put. There are a few others that you could put too, so I'll just go through them on the mark scheme. So I mentioned that it's double-stranded, that we've got thymine compared to uracil and the sugars. But this one, the DNA is long and RNA is short. That's actually directly stated on the specification. That's because DNA contains lots of genes and stuff, whereas if we're thinking about mRNA, that's just kind of a copy of one gene. DNA has base pairing, mRNA doesn't, or hydrogen bonding. And this one's slightly less obvious. DNA has introns, whereas mRNA doesn't. So introns are the non-coding regions, whereas in mRNA, the entire gene is copied, including introns and exons, but the introns, the non-coding regions, are removed via a process called splicing.